Welcome to Preaching That Matters. A place you can find apostolic Pentecostal preaching. A place where all generations can be fed with the Word of God. We hope you enjoy. We wanted to expedite time for you and uh, not hold you over another night. So we probably won't try that again. But uh, I want to say to all of you that are here, that stayed, how much I appreciate you and to everybody else in our district that could not be in attendance at the conference, how much I appreciate them. There are a couple of items I need to take care of and then get right into the Word of the Lord. And number one is an offering for our missionaries that are here. We have three missionaries that came. They've been here this week, and I want us to bless them with an offering. And uh, I'd like for them to stand, our missionaries that are here. There's Brother Tolstead. I know he's here. There's Brother Stewart. And there was uh, Brother Smith right here. All right. Do you men have PIM forms? Just happen to have some. All right. Ushers. Where's my ushers at? I want them to get ready to receive an offering. This will be divided among our missionaries. If you would like a PIM form, the missionaries are standing here. If you'd raise your hand, wave at them, you could save them miles of travel. But I want them to uh, be available here. You could get a form. Anybody want to help them out? Let me see a hand somewhere. You want to take on a missionary? of our ministers. There's one over here, Brother Hargrove. and uh, How many, Brother Hargrove? All three of them. Get to this man over here, kind of move around in this congregation. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help in this offering for our missionaries. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now in the name of the Lord for these missionaries and for the need that is here. Bless them. Help us to bless them today as they travel, as they Go about the work of God. In Jesus' name, I pray in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Lord bless you as you give in this offering. Thank you for giving to them. Uh, let me say also that uh, Tupelo Children's Mansion, I want to reemphasize our support for them. Minister's retirement. I could say a lot of things today about uh, the various aspects of things that have been promoted here. We are uh, in the district. There was uh, the board considering uh, things to make things better for the camp. There are some things that they'll be meeting about in the May board meeting that uh, I want you to know about. I put it in my letter, but they'll be looking at uh, uh, a direction for us and and improving our uh, media presentations here in the camp, uh, the, a projector that we're looking at, and uh, some other areas of uh, projection of our services, projecting the speaker on a screen. And uh, as technology advances, ultimately probably going to uh, the production of uh, CDs and and DVDs for the service. So they'll be meeting about that in the May board meeting. If there's input from you, uh, I'd like to hear it, and uh, we'll be discussing the future there. We have, uh, we're sensitive to the direction of our brethren, but we're going to look at that in that May board meeting with formulation of policy and other areas that will uh, safeguard the use of things that uh, we are developing. So may the Lord bless you. Uh, we're going to move now into the Word of God, and I appreciate every one of you. How many love the Lord today? And I've got just uh, about 20 minutes that I'm going to take, and I want to preach to you what the Lord has laid on my heart. I sought the Lord for this conference and had the opportunity to preach at our men's conference, and the Lord gave me a message for the men's conference. But today, 
in, in seeking God for this meeting, he began to talk to me again about the same subject. I'm preaching to a different crowd. It's ministers. I preached to laity, the minister, the uh, men from your church that were here. But I want to infuse into this message with the help of God a vision for the future of the Texas district and what God has done and what he can do through every church represented here today and through the churches throughout our district. If you have your Bibles, let's stand together and turn to the book of Second Tim 1 Timothy chapter 2. And uh, I'm going to begin reading with verse number 1. Read down through verse 2. I'm sorry, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Beginning in verse number 1, reading down through verse number 4. 2 Timothy. Good to have Brother Johnny James with us. Uh, in the conference. He's uh, a guest with us here today. It's certainly good to have him, a great preacher of the gospel, and certainly we were honored to have our good general superintendent and his wonderful message that he preached to us last night. Second Timothy 2, verse number 1, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And I want to preach a little while today on the subject of a good soldier. And in seeking God for this message, for this conference, God is ready to mobilize a mighty army in the Texas district. And I want us to see the potential and what God can do through all of us and through our churches. You may be seated. I remember my days in the military, and I have talked about them over the district. I'm going to take you back a few years, and I want you to see what a good soldier looked like. I wish I could have took my hat off because I had hair then. But that's me. 1962. Your country was in good hands in 1962. This is not my old field jacket. This belonged to my son but I can fit into it. Got my name on it. Right here. Now in case you're wondering about that shot, that's me on the left. Soldier of the Year. And uh, quite an accomplishment. When you consider there were only 120 military personnel on the base. <laughs> So I don't have a lot of things to. Good. 
Anybody ever read Beetle Bailey? Now, I don't want to take too long in my introduction here. And I'll have to switch caps here after a while. Because I don't think I have enough neck muscle to hold this helmet. But 1962, did they do that family portrait up there? Did he get the family portrait? Go back to that family portrait. That's me on the, on the right. That's my twin brother Lanny on the left. Cropped it a little bit. We didn't know anything about the church. And on the right is my dad. Italian. Left his mother. Cajun lady that I'm going to tell you when, when those old rough hands put big salve on my chest. You talk about a comforting feeling. If I got really sick, she went to Mithilatum. And uh, there were some doses of other things that you probably all took when you grew up that she believed just kept you from getting sick. I took Hattie Call. Anybody ever heard of Hattie Call? <laughs> I had my Superman t-shirt, and let me tell you, I envisioned myself with muscles bulging, but it didn't work. So in 1962, 112 pounds of sinewy, sinews and bone enlisted in the military. And there's some things that I learned in the military that I'll never forget. I won't take time to go into them all. But in just an introductory week of the weeks of basic training, some things were instilled in my life that I'll never forget and that affect me today. If you don't mind me preaching with a cap here, it, it may help the glare. But the Lord began to deal with me about a message. About the future. And about His army. And we've gathered here today from, I want to just keep it kind of military style, but from outpost across the district of Texas. You've come here as fighting men. You've been involved in a, in a battle. We must see ourselves not as we see ourselves, but as God sees us. Brother Weatherit, I think about the challenge before us as a district. And the things that God has that He wants us to have. But there is a challenge. We could see ourselves as few in number, with limited resources, 
with limited abilities and with limited talents. Or we could look around and we could see ourselves as God sees us. I'm preaching to preachers, so I'm going to just take some shortcuts, and I may have to get out of some of this garb if I get to feeling like I'm feeling right now. But you see, when he found Gideon weak and hiding and threshing his wheat on the threshing floor, he looked at Gideon, and his remark to Gideon was, Thy mighty man a valor. And Gideon probably had to look around to see if anybody was there because he was afraid of what was going on. And you know the story. But God saw a man that could start out with 32,000 and set a new record, Brother Weathering, whittle that force down to 300 people and God could take 300 people who saw themselves not as they saw themselves, but as God saw them. And God said, I can give you a victory that the world will take note of. And I'm saying to the United Pentecostal Church of the Texas District, uh, listen, I'm nothing, you're nothing, but we serve a God that can take a fighting force uh, that sees the captain of our salvation. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, he can give us a revival like we have never seen before. Yeah. Hallelujah. Your church can reach your city. And all of us together can reach the Texas district. Because you see, we're serving a God that's looking at us. Now I'm going to hit the high points. Don't get the grasshopper complex. Don't look at the giants and say, hey, we can't do it. There's giants in the land. All God needs is a few people like David uh, that can take simple weapons uh, of warfare and use them in the hand of a man with faith. Uh, and in the name of Jesus, uh, I'm telling you, he can give us revival in this district. And your city can be reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Our identity is not based on our human abilities. But we have taken on His identity. We are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. I'm preaching to the sons of God. I'm not here today. I take it as a, as a, as, as a solemn responsibility today. But I'm preaching to the sons of God. And we have the captain of our salvation. And I'm telling you, he's leading this army. And he's giving direction to this army. Joshua stood in Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. And the captain appeared with a drawn sword. And when he came to Joshua, he began to give him instruction on how to win the battle. Now I'm preaching to men that are intelligent men. I stand far down the line with some of you that are so gifted and so talented, but we can't win the battle with our own abilities or talents. The Lord is with us. And God's got a plan that will confound the world if we'll get a hold of His plan. He took Joshua's army and said, just march around the city. And on the seventh day, I want you to shout. I'm just cutting it short today, but I'm going to tell you, praise and faith in an almighty God will give you victory. The captain of our salvation. And he's got a battle plan. It's never changed. You can go to all the seminars and, and, and we're going to have equipping sessions uh, 
But let me tell you something. The battle plan has never changed. The devil's still using the same old battle plan. He's never changed. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. But I'm going to tell you, long before he developed his plan, we're serving a God that had a redemptive plan and a plan for the church to have mighty revival. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Listen, in my name they shall, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now here, they took the battle plan. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. And the Lord working with them, confirming the, the, the word with signs following. Hey, we've got a battle plan, preacher. It's never changed. Take the name of Jesus. Go back with faith in that name. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to tell you, God will touch your city. Our world is hungry to see it. This is an all-volunteer army. We, we, we have been chosen by Him. But it was up to us to accept the call. I could stand at attention today and give him a serial number. RA 1864-208. And I dare say that any man in this place that's been in the military could stand here and give you his, his serial number. Why? They ingrained it. They taught, they taught us where it counted in the child line. You wanted to eat, you had to learn. Pretty strong motivation, I think. If you didn't know what you needed to know, to the end of the line. It didn't take this country boy long to catch on. If I wanted to eat, I better start learning some things. But I want to get down to something I feel strongly about. There is no division in this army. Listen to me. Nothing divides us. Paul wrote to the Colossian church and he said, Do not lie to each other. I'm reading from the NIV. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge and in the image of its creator. Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. I'm going to share my vision for the district. I see united Pentecostal churches being planted and in existence all over this district. I don't see us segregating the district. Now preach with me. Listen to me a minute. We're not going to divide into black churches, Hispanic churches, Korean churches. Oh, no. We're united Pentecostal churches. And I don't feel like I'm stepping out on a limb. When I look over this congregation, I don't see color. 
I don't see race. I see blood-bought people uh, that have been baptized uh, in the name of Jesus Christ uh, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, and the heartbeat of every one of us uh, is one day we're going to see Him uh, and we're going to be like Him. I don't feel like I'm out on a limb. I feel like I got a hold of the trunk of the tree today. And there's some folks in this district that are saying, we've got to reach everybody. Woo. Brother Darcy, we got to reach your people. Come on up here. For a minute. I want you to talk to us. Don't take too long. I'm going to get my timer out. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm here to serve. The Lord called me back in 1992 to come and be a part of the United Pentecostal Church. It was the greatest moment of my life when I walked through those doors the first words out of my mouth was, I finally found my family. I finally found the church. And since then, we've been faithfully trying to serve the Lord. Came in under Brother Holly, believing the Lord would move in a, on behalf of the people of this world. I love Texas. I love the people of Texas. But I'm telling you, we need your help. Our cities are desperate for a move of God in our black community. I remember in yesterday, Brother Haney was talking about our backyard. Could I tell you, there are people dying out there. There are people who are desperate for the truth. I grew up in church, and men, some of you know my testimony, but I grew up in church not realizing that there was a real, true resurrection from the dead. I grew up in church not realizing that there was a repentance from sin. I didn't understand the name of Jesus in that came with it, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the baptism in Jesus' name, not knowing the truth until I found this great family. I believe with all my heart in the vision that's been set not only by our superintendent but also by Brother Russo that there is one vision for one world. I don't believe there are three worlds. There are not three gods, so there are not three worlds. There are one world. I believe in true oneness. And it's not given according to character of skin or culture of skin, but in the Holy Ghost. I believe that's why the Lord prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, that we would be one. No wonder he prayed with such fervency, because that would be the trial in this generation. And I believe we can do it if the children of the day of Babel could gather together and build something beyond our wildest imagination, so much so that God would come down and have to stop what they were doing. How much so if we would allow the Holy Ghost to baptize us like it did on the day of Pentecost, and all the people from all over the world became one in mind and spirit. I tell you today, we will see the dream. And this mighty army that God has called uh, to us to be will take up hold uh, upon the Satan, upon Satan and bring it to bear. I believe that with all my heart and mind. Would you join the fight? We need a church. We need the church. We need our white brothers to join with us. We need our Hispanic brothers to join with us. I want to tell you something. The Lord is doing something in a great place. You may be seated for a moment. I'm getting out of here. Don't shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord is doing great things in Texas. And I know we can sit up and pick each other to pieces. But God called us to, to live in oneness, in love in love. This is our vocation. This is our calling to be one in spirit. The Lord led us a long time ago to a place, Mahia, Texas. First I was in Fairfield. It seemed like we fought all the devils in hell to try to preach the gospel. God led us to Fairfield. All of a sudden in the last three years revival broke out. 
like you wouldn't believe. There are some of my brethren from my Section 8 that are here to testify of this fact. But what God has done in a few years is beyond your wildest imagination. I'm one of a few black pastors, Brother Matthew, as well as Brother Perkins, are with us, and we're, we're standing strong. We're not leaving. I said, we're not leaving, but we need your help. Now, if God can do this, and if some of you know my testimony, if God could do this with this man, surely he can do it with all of us. He's not a respecter of persons. On this first few rows, this is what the Lord has done from about eight people when we started. Would y'all stand up for a moment? Would you just turn around? I want them to see your faces, what the Lord has done. God can do this for us, church. This is only a portion of what he's trying to do. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Let's give the Lord praise right now. God can do that. Only God can do that. Now, you know what I'm saying? We're not going to leave reaching the black community to just three of our churches in the Texas district. I'm challenging this district. I want it to echo to every part of this district. We need every church to reach everybody. And listen, if there's, if there's a preference, uh, we'll allow a preference. Come here, Brother Palacios. You're representing the Hispanic community. We have, we have Spanish language ministries. Why? There's a language preference. But listen, you're still United Pentecostal. And you're still part of the church. Uh, and coming over our borders, uh, listen, they're, they're coming in. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, there's a mighty army in the Texas district. Uh, and God's going to open doors for your churches. Uh, and you're going to reach them. How are you going to reach them? i tell you what Brother Darcy told the board. Uh, there's only one language when it comes to God. Uh, and that's the language of love. The language of love. And love will make every, every boundary fall away. Because there's somebody that's saying, uh, I want to reach them. Thank you, Brother Palacios, for what you're doing. And what is being done. But I want it sounded out from this pulpit right now. We're not relegating it to just uh, the number of Spanish churches that we have. Uh, but there's some Anglo pastors uh, that may not be able to speak a word of Spanish. Uh, but you're going to reach with love uh, to every nation uh, and every race. Uh, because listen, uh, this is a missions field in itself. Now... You may be seated. Brother, stay up here, Brother Plashus. Come stand up here with brother, with brother Darcy. Now you think, well, we need to change our church. And I'm going to get to my next point here. When I got in the army, if I'd have walked up to the commanding officer, in that slide you saw the first day, sharp trooper that I am and I just got here commander I want you to read I want you to meet God's gift to the army and I know you've been fighting for years But I just got here from Louisiana. I'm a little hungry for gumbo, but the cook don't know how to cook it, and I'm not going to tell him how. But you've been doing it all wrong. You see, I'm Johnny come lately. Just stepped on the scene. You know what? There wouldn't have been a cell deep enough and dark enough that he wouldn't have resigned me to with that kind of an attitude. And I'm going to just draw a line here today and tell you, if you got here yesterday, 
You didn't get in the church to change the whole church. I brought a lot of baggage with me. Now I'm going to preach to you today. I brought a lot of baggage with me. But listen, I had to get rid of some baggage. And there was a preacher that took a stand. And he said, we love you, Sonny. But I'm going to tell you something. We're not changing the church just to suit you. Because I want to see you saved. And I want to see you turn around. And I want to see your life made different. You know what? He loved me enough to tell me the truth. And I'm going to preach to every preacher. I'm not qualified, but I'm going to preach it anyway. Get a hold of the Word of God. Love God with all of your heart. Don't change this message. Don't change our standards of holiness. Hallelujah. Don't take the world and try to let it invade the church. Hey, I'm preaching to you today. I'm telling you, God's got a revival for a church that will take a stand and and stand and not be turned around by anything that the devil's trying to do. Come here, Brother Joy. Brother Joy is from India. He was of another denomination, am I right? Came from India. How long have you been here? Three years. Don't let this gun scare you, Brother Joy. I know I'm a tough-looking troop, but don't, don't let it scare you. I want him to tell you what drew him to the church. Talk to us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, what a great God we serve. We are a God who can take care of us. He's the one who can lead us. He's our leader, and we are the soldiers. A respected uh, general superintendent, district superintendent, honorable ministers, and the ministers in Christ, I stand along uh, with my pastor, Pastor D.G. Agru, and all the other ministers here. I greet you all. My name is Joy Samuel. Coming from the land where it is written here in Esther, chapter 1, verse 1, son of a pastor who established more than 78 churches, and back in India, I was ministering in the Middle East near South, Saudi Arabia. Baptized many in that uh, Arabian Sea. Before coming here at a church about between 250 to 300. I used to visit very often here. One fine Sunday evening along with my sister's family. I stepped in uh, Pastor Hagru's church. As I stepped in there, he sent an usher to come out of stage. I came out of stage, and I saw the people glowing. But I saw the people without jewelries. I saw the people without makeup. And I began to think, this is the one church which I'm looking for here. I thought uh, when coming over to America, will be entirely different. I went back and told my wife, look, we, I found a church. I found a church. They worship in truth and in spirit. Not only that, they don't wear jewels, jewelries. And you know, they are so wonderful people. We came here. We have never heard the gospel about Jesus' name. Gospel. Back in India... Because my father, when he, I think, became a minister, he was beaten by my grandfather and the, the one of the bishop was his uncle. But he stood for the gospel. So we thought, uh, 
We are somebody separated people living for the Lord. When we came here, then we understood uh, that we lack something. That is the Jesus name baptism. My pastor didn't force me, but he began to teach us. He began to teach us about the Jesus name baptism. We obeyed, uh, not in my whole family, my sister's family, and we are working for the Indians. Uh, what a great, you know, what a great God. Uh, do you understand what you're reading, Philip asked the Ethiopian uh, Enoch? How can I, Ethiopian said, unless someone explains. Uh, my pastor, D.G. Agro, he explained so beautifully that I understood uh, that I was lacking one thing, that I, I was not baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Oh, Israel, there's one God, one Lord. Oh, Indians, uh, there is only one God. There is one Lord, my Jesus. God bless you all and God be with you all. Brother Joy, stay up here. There are people in this congregation that are, that are Asian in descent. And every, every nationality represented. But you know what I want to see in the Texas district? I want to see us link arms. I want to see us link arms together. And I want to see us reach our district like we've never reached before. Amen. How many want to join with me? How many want to open your church doors with a vision and with a desire and reach the people from every nationality and every country? I look at Brother Gidros. He's reaching. I look at others in this district. Listen, I'm not here to fuss at you. I'm saying the Lord is telling us, uh, wake up to who you are. Wake up to what you've got uh, and get a hold of it uh, because he's got a revival uh, that's going to affect the entire world uh, right here in the Texas district. Thank you, men. Thank you, men. Hallelujah. Oh, and I'm, I'm coming to a close. The enemy might outnumber us. But God delights in taking the minority and winning the battle. And there's a military code of conduct, uh, and there's seven Army Corps values. I don't have time to preach on them all. But loyalty, core value, loyalty. This is the U.S. Army. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. Listen. If it's in the military, how much more should it be in the church of the living God? And the code of conduct says, I'm an American fighting man, fighting in the forces that guard my country and our way of life. I am prepared to give my life in their defense. I'm talking about the military. But what about the church? I will never surrender of my own free will. I want the devil to know I'm never going to give up. Sure, we're going to face some hard times. Sure, it's going to be a struggle. Sure, there's going to be some suffering. But I've lived 60 years to know there's a God that can take us and do mighty exploits. If we just make up our minds, we're going to walk with him. <laughs> that code of conduct. Oh, I wish I had time to go through it. Should I become a prisoner of war? I'm required to give name, rank, service number, and date of birth. I will evade answering further questions to the utmost of my ability. I will make no oral or written statements disloyal to my country and its allies. Hey, preachers, let me tell you something. It's time to lay down all differences. It's time to get a hold of truth and unite around this one God and realize there's nothing that can separate us. We're not fighting one another. Now I'm preaching to preachers today. I'm going to tell you we're not fighting one another. We've got an enemy. It's the world, the flesh, and the devil. But I'm looking at a church. When you unite around the plan of battle, God's going to give us victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
And I could go through insurmountable odds. Everybody's important. And if you make up your mind to follow God, the battle is won before it's ever fought. And everybody's important. For the want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For the want of a shoe, the horseman was lost. For the want of a horse, the warrior was lost. For the want of a warrior, the battle was lost. Indeed, the kingdom was lost. All for the want of a nail. I'm telling you, you're all important. Sure, your weaknesses become your strengths when you turn them over to the mighty God and He wants to use the church. So preacher, come on up, I'm closing. I'm a soldier in God's army. I want that song sung. I'm a soldier in God's army. If I could do one thing today through the Spirit of God, it would be to let something start right here in this service that would affect this entire district. Go home to your church. It may be a country church. But you never know that soul that you win. You never know the potential of one soul. And you know what I'm looking at today? I'm looking at the